It's recording and welcome to uh, interim for the Seaboard Working Group meeting. So this is an ITF meeting and uh, the ITF not well applies. Um, oh, I posted the agenda in the chat. I don't think I need to also share screen. Um, so today we have quite a short agenda. Um, so we have a quick working group document status update uh, from the chairs, and then and then I was hoping maybe Kasten can tell us about the OID document. Uh, if you have any update for that? And then we uh, want to quickly go over the charter that was posted to the mailing list that Jim posted to the mailing list and see if there is any objections. Um, and then any other business, whatever. Uh, whatever you want to, yeah, if there is anything else you want to add to the agenda. I see that uh, someone is adding adoption calls. So we can take that. Yeah, I did. Okay. Okay, so just to anything else we need to add otherwise? We can take it in any other business. So, uh, working group document status update. The um, uh, both CBORBIS and the date tag got added to the next uh, ISG telechat, which is gonna be the 10th of September. So that's uh, just recently, a couple of days ago. So this is moving forward. And for the OID document, I didn't see anything in the mailing list or or any update. Yeah, so for, for <clears throat> 7049 bits, uh, we have uh, two reviews so far. Uh, Jaron Schaeffer is telling us that we should spell out what we expect implementers to document about their tag validity checking. And uh, yeah, yeah, I sent a pointer to, to where this discussion stopped on August 11th to the mailing list. Um, so I think we, we have to find a position on that at uh, some point. Uh, I have a bit of a, a image in my mind of, of a PIX performer. If, if you ever had uh, uh, have been working on OSI stuff, they, they love these PIX performer things where you have a Word document that as an implementer you you fill out with all the things that you want to say about your implementation. And, and the performer means that there is a standard set of, of essentially questions you have to answer. And I, I'm pretty sure we don't want to do that. So that, that that's one of a, uh, one uh, comment. And the other comment was uh, from Jennard uh, telling us uh, this is a nice document, but it's a bit long-winded at some point. Point uh, so people might stop reading because uh, that's just too much, much text for for the amount of information being transferred, and uh, that of course is a is a consideration. And one of the the um, things things that may happen in in an ISG review is of course that you add more of this stuff because you want to address some comment. And so more verbiage is, is added. So um, uh, I think that that's kind of the, the op opposite direction of, of uh, Yaren's uh, uh, comment. So if, if people have an opinion on that, I'd, I'd love to, to hear it here or, or in the mailing list, uh, because at some point uh, we will have to uh, react to, to that sector review or actually to what the security ADs uh, take from that. So that, that's the 7049 BIS thing. Uh, date tag. Well, just, just a second. So you said something about the security ADs and I, I missed the half a sentence. Okay, the, the, the IntelliChat reviews, the directorate, Reviews are, are just input to the ADs. 
and uh, I'd, I'd like to hear what the ADs actually make out of that sector review. They mostly uh, ignore it. Okay. They mostly ignore it at this point. Okay. <laughs> I hope they uh, do, then that will save some energy. Well, so the, the worst case scenario is that you pay attention to their the sector review, do something, and then they disagree with what you did. Um, not a very good situation, in my opinion, but um, um, I don't know. I mean, at this point, at this point you basically you, you assume that when you get to uh, AD review that you basically doing your your security review from scratch. I I think that the the Gen Art uh, review um, is just not really asking to do any change. It's just a comment, um, and yeah, not much that you can do about that. <laughs> Um, a comment for, to use in the by handling the other comments, <laughs> so we can yeah, point yeah. you that and say we don't want to add more verbiage if, if we help. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. But uh, yeah, I guess uh, we wait for uh, the telechat and we see what the ISG comments will be. But yeah, I normally I don't think that. They, I, I don't expect these to be um, the comments that will need to, that will require action, let's say. Okay. So on the date tag, somebody mentioned leap seconds and uh, uh, yeah. The, the, the interesting thing when you do something about uh, complex subjects like, like calendars or uh, human names or uh, other things, uh, the people who look at these documents, uh, some of them actually find out about the complexity of the subject for the first time. And <laughs> So you, you, you run into, uh, you, you need to interact with their learning experience. And that, that's a bit weird. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't think we really need to discuss leap seconds and, and a day tech uh, document. Um, but uh, if, if it helps, uh, we, we might want to. So that that's my view of, of the day tag situation. And uh, with OID, um, essentially, we, we are uh, stuck on, on um, one issue, which is essentially we would like to understand this, this nesting um, aspect applying a tag to an array or or a map and um, so far nobody has come up with uh, one way of, of making this work that that feels right so we're still in a kind of exploratory phase is there any such way that feels right or should we give up on, on that feature or should we cut down that feature to the most basic uh, one? So I think we need to continue that discussion, even though it may be a little bit frustrating because it, it seems there is no obvious way to do this right. Um, I, I, I feel a bit that the nesting issue is a, as a solution seeking a problem. Um, I mean, know why we're putting it there. Um, 
but maybe maybe uh can can we somehow bite off a little bit and well i guess that we need to write the, the rules for reassembling i'm just trying to think if we can write down some rules about applying it uh with the understanding that it may permit additional things that we don't really want to encode uh at least we don't know if we want to encode i guess it's probably too difficult to do it that way not sure if anyone's hearing me yes uh, we do and, and uh, <laughs> so um <laughs> When you do a design, there, there are some places where, where I mean, it, it's just obvious that this object need, needs a, a square uh, opening at, at this place. And, and right. uh, so you feel right and confident and, and so. And then you have other uh, things where, yeah, there, there is no obvious things. You could add complexity, but it's not quite clear that you really need it, or you can remove complexity, but then there might be applications that get hurt. Um, so I think it, it's always important to discuss these things based on, on examples. It, it's, it, ne it never works to discuss this in, in a theoretical uh, vacuum, and, and that's uh, why I think it was useful to we have this um, uh, so, distinguished mean example. So, uh, so I mean, this is really. Oh. Go ahead, Jim. The obvious solutions that I thought of, I put in my last ma mail message, but I haven't been able to come up with anything that I like yet, personally. So why, let me ask it this way. So I mean, this talking about section five, right? Tag factoring with OID and map. Why is the example in section 6.1, looks like it could use tag factoring since the OIDs start with 254 all the time, except for building. Oh, games. that's not what, what, ah, yeah. So th th there are some remnants in this document uh, from from uh, a previous version, which was way more sophisticated about it. So we're not trying to do prefix compression. Mm -hmm. we, we, we're just trying to, to say something like, here's a whole array, and all of these are object IDs. So we put the object ID tag on, on the array and not on, on every single one of them. So... Okay, so then I don't understand how it's used then. Um, all the items in array that are byte strings. So we don't have an example. So, so the example of the distinguished name does not work because those are, we're not factoring out prefixes of the OID. Um, so, so I don't have an example then to know. And so I think we should just remove it. Well, the example in figure five is making use of, of a form of uh, factoring out the tag. So Sorry. here the figure idea five. is... Figure five, is that what you said? Or is it, uh, okay, where is figure five? It's on page eight. Five. Four. Figure five. Figure five is an example of factoring out what? Just the tag. So instead of having a tag on each of the byte strings, that, oh, that oh, I see. Okay. Yes, and this, this example essentially needs propagation uh, down multiple levels. So we, we have an array of maps. And uh, really, the the tag applies to all the keys 
of those maps. So it applies to everything that's a byte string. So if I happen to have uh, a right-hand side of my map, a value that is, that was a byte stream, the tag would also apply to it, implying it's an OID. Actually, the proposal right now is to only have it apply to the map keys, not to the map values. Okay, so I see I'm just confusing array, the statement about arrays with the statement about maps. Okay. So for arrays, it would just re uh, apply to the elements, and for maps, it would apply to the keys, but not to the values. I understand. Um, so, so what in the end, you're you're concerned about you original, you you said uh, nesting issues, um, what was your original concern. And, and I guess I misunderstood your concern about whether or not it was useful or not at all. And um, so what is it? I, I guess you're proposing that there's something more complicated we should do. Well, the, the, at the end of section five, the, there is a paragraph yeah. that uh, suggests the, the uh, Tags propagate further down. Yeah. And th th there are problems with that. Um, so it, it may propagate down on some branch where the propagation is unintended. Um, and th that's a bit dangerous. Also, it should be talking about tags as well. It only talks about arrays and maps. Uh, at the moment. So the, the alternatives are uh, restricting the propagation in some form. So for instance, propagating at all, um, or coming up with a rule that, that uh, actually still enables figure five, um, or maybe getting rid of, of that uh, applying the tag to an array or map feature completely. So, right. So your figure five requires that the tag on the array uh, applies to all the elements of the array, namely the, um, I guess it's an array of maps or several maps in there. Um, so it has to apply to the, each one of those maps. And, but if the map contained an array then you're saying it wouldn't apply by the current rule, or it would. Well, it, it, it would array only apply to the key. Pardon me? It would only apply to the key. It would apply to the yeah. keys, not to the, map, to the values. And since we're unlikely to have a map or an array as the key, it's probably doesn't. It's probably stops there. And uh, an array of an array of an array would be fine. And I'm not sure if you were arbitrarily limiting it to three or just you, that was just your example. I think you were just that was just your example. So each array within an array it would apply to, but not necessarily other. By not applying it to the value part of maps, then we're basically limiting it to either multidimensional arrays or to something else. As Jim has posted it. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. Not everyone had the thing on their screen. I guess, uh, Carson, I would say I, I'm happy with enabling figure five, and your rule seems to enable it. It maybe needs another couple paragraphs of explanation. Um, or examples, negative examples, maybe. It does not apply here. It does not apply here. Michael, what do you understand the rule to be? Uh, that I understand the rule to be that the tag uh, applies to everything within an array and it applies to the uh, um, 
key parts of a map. Um, and this rule is applied, um, I'm going to say recursively as well. So, um, and it uh, applies all the way down an array, as deep as it, the array nests. And if for some reason we had arrays as the key parts of a map, it would apply to that, although that's probably never done realistically. But it, if, if someone did do it, it would apply. So that if I have an array that contains both oids and non-oid binary values, that is a situation where I cannot use this. If you had an array that contained two different things that weren't you can that contained binary strings that weren't oids, then you couldn't use this because I don't think an oid this tag has any meaning when applied to a. Uh, a, a string or an integer. And maybe we need to define that, that it has no meaning. Or, or maybe it doesn't apply to anything that has a tag in front of it as well. Yeah, stopping attacks may, may be a, a good way. So I, I try to to uh, write this up uh, in so re replacing the question mark with one specific proposal, and uh, then we can see whether we like that or not. That sounds good. Sorry, was trying to find the mute button. Um, also, that was part of um, Jim's review, right? I think too. Or yeah, that, that was essentially the substance. Yeah. Uh, okay. That was not addressed yet. Okay, so yeah, we could continue that if you have a proposal, and then we can continue the discussion in the main list and possibly in the next interim. Great. Um, so I, I, one reason I was distracted is I was reading uh, the um, 7049 BIS security review by Yaron. Um, and his points are probably well taken about a, a point form security considerations. Um, so what is it? It's Wednesday and the telechat is next week. So my bet is given it's a long document, my bet is you probably get deferred, but, um, if we do get a sec re AD review, uh, then it's probably better just to address their points directly. But um, it, it, his, his points may be worth addressing anyway. Um, I guess part of the question is whether or not he's willing to engage in a back and forth on this. Um, if so, I think that would be useful because um, it, you can simply point to that discussion uh, when the SEC AD complains about something similar. We had a little bit of back and forth, but that, that 
that uh, ended on, on August 11th with the message I pointed to. Uh, I am not sure I saw these mails. Um. Well, I sent a, a message with a pointer to the mail as a reply to the to, to, to today's agenda. Aha, uh -huh. okay. About 100 That's the one. Ago. That's the one. Yes, yes. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. My filters uh, are not great for, um, yeah, stuff shows up in different folders that it shouldn't, so. Okay, yeah, but I think we can move on. Um, no. Next on the agenda was the charter discussion. So almost everybody on this call already has stated their opinion in the mailing list. Um, so I don't know if we, I can, I can um, copy paste the change or just share my screen. But yeah, I'm mostly looking for objections at this point. Let's see if I can do that. You can see my screen. <laughs> yes. So you've seen this, you've already commented. I'm just, I want to take this point to uh, see if there is any objection to this change. And just to yeah, repeat, this was to, um, this is to be able to do separate CDDL documents instead of just one CDDL um, version two. So I think this is uh, the opposite. So yeah. previous ADs have uh, generally told me that uh, it's mostly a working group decision whether something is done in one, two, three, or 25 uh, documents. Yeah. Except we did. The data we is, is very explicit about that. We checked with Barry before, right after ITF 108, and Yes, he said that we would probably need a we would need a charter um, update. Okay. But this is quite quick, so I think it, since there is no objections, we can uh, we can yeah send it for review. Okay. Yes, and then next on the agenda was uh, adoption calls. So we have two documents, which are not currently working group documents, but which I think we want to make working group documents. And that's the CDDL control and the pact. Uh, yes. So, should we just issue a call for adoption right now, or what's the status of this? I see that the CDDL was uh, the control operator source CDDL was uh, updated today, following your review, I think, Jim. At one point. Karshan was going to make an update to the patch document before we did the 
adoption call, but I'm not too sure we actually need to need to force that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think that if people don't have objections, we should just go ahead and issue the adoption calls. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, this VA control adoption call, of course, would be conditional on getting the recharge ring, but uh, I've done adoption calls that implied a charter update before. Mm -hmm. And Barry has said he's fine with that. Okay. Okay, so yeah, we can issue the adoption call in the main list. Uh, two weeks should be fine, right? So we can have it um, a result for next interim. Yes. Okay, uh, any other business? don't hear anything. So I think we can uh, close the meeting now. Uh, next meeting is in two weeks, same time. And yeah, the, so for the agenda for next meeting, I guess we will have um, next meeting is after the telechat. So we can discuss any issues that come from the telechat and then uh, yeah, we will see the hopefully the the update on the tags OID document and yeah, status update on the charter and these adoption calls. And I think that's it. Thank you so much for calling in and talk to you in two weeks. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. bye.